In the last video, we modeled the island and we also modeled the water surrounding it. And in this video, we're going to go and shade those using cycles. So the first thing that we want to do is shade the water. However, since water is mostly reflective, and right now if we go ahead and preview render this, you'll see that there's not really anything for the water to reflect. It's just sort of a boring bluish gray or whatever you happen to have your background set to be. So first of all, let's go down here under the world settings in the node editor. And with the background, I'm just going to press shift A, add a texture and environment texture. And we're going to open it up in HDR like we used in the last series when we looked at indoor lighting. So I provided one by Greg Zoll. It's Creative Commons and you can use it wherever you'd like. Now if we plug this in, we can see exactly where it is. Now I used this image because the horizon line is far away. There's not too many image or uh, big buildings blocking or anything like that so it won't look unnatural. And so now if we go to this, this uh, texture panel, right over here, we can change this Z rotation value and position this exactly where we want it. I can see the sun is pretty bright. So let's leave that off screen just a little bit to the right. And that way we have a good gradation between the yellow of the sunset and the bl blue of the sky. And it looks pretty nice. Now we want to get rid of this island over here. So let's just increase the Z location until that's gone away. So now if we want this to be just a little bit brighter, let's take this background and change the strength to 2. And now we're ready to get started with the water. I might want to rotate it just a little bit more so the white isn't too glaring. OK. Now we can see if we have any gaps in our water. You can see we do have a few right there. So let's select those and pull them in a little bit and pull it down. And same with this last one right here. That way we don't have any holes. OK. So with this water selected, I'm going to go back to our object nodes right here and add a new material. Then I can rename this to Ocean. And we can get started. So the first property of water that you might think of is it's clear and it's also reflective. Now we're going to work on the reflective part first and add the clear part later. So first of all, let's add a glossy node. With this diffuse selected, I'm just going to press Shift S and switch to shader and glossy. And if we set the roughness to zero, you can see that we now have very sharp reflections. I'm going to save just in case. And with this selected, if we go to the modifier panel, you can change the resolution to somewhere around 30, and that should give us enough detail to uh, make sure we can see everything. Last time I tried recording this, I actually had a typo and tried to change the resolution to 304, just accidental, and that kind of crashed everything. So just make sure not to do that. For some reason, they, they should have sort of a cap on that, but like they do for the subdivision service modifier, but they don't for the ocean modifier. So just be careful of that. Don't increase it too high. Otherwise, things will probably crash. Uh, all right, so getting started with this glossy node, Let's add just a little bit of roughness because things aren't exactly completely sharp. So let's go 0 0.001 and that should be good. There shouldn't be too much noticeable difference, um, but it will help in the long run. So let's take this glossy node and I'm going to shift D duplicate it up and I'm going to make this one a little bit darker and give it a little bit more of a blue. And the reason that we're doing this is so we can mix the two together but we're going to mix based on the Fresnel value. And what that is, is basically the simulation of the fact that objects are more reflective when you're at more of a grazing angle to them. So you can think of this as if you're standing on top of a dock and you're looking straight down into the water, maybe you can see some fish swimming down there and uh, maybe see the bottom of the pond, anything like that. However, if you are, say, sitting in a boat and looking out over the horizon, you're not going to be able to see into the water, you're just going to see the reflection. And so the angle that you are looking at, opposed to the water, uh, will determine how reflective it is and how much light is absorbed. So this first value, uh, we're going to use the darker one to be where light is a little bit more absorbed and reflected less intensely. 
So to do that, I'm going to add a uh, shader and mix shader. And I'll just mix these two together. The darker one on top, the lighter one on the bottom. And then I can press Shift A, add input and layer weight. Now, if you press Control, Shift, and click on that layer weight, you can see the value of the Fresnel. The white is, when we're looking at it at an angle, like that. And when we're looking at it straight down, we get more of a darker black. Now we can set this all the way to black and just add a little bit of white. And you can see we now get that effect where white is where we want it to be reflective and black is where we do not want it to be as reflective. So since black represents zero and white represents one, the black is going to determine this darker color and the white is going to determine this lighter color right here because anything that's zero goes to this first socket, anything that is one goes to the second socket and the gray values will mix between the two. So let's just plug that in. I think I'm going to use a value of 0.2 and now you can see exactly what's happening. So this is very cool. But of course we also need this to be refractive as well as reflective. So reflection is when light is bouncing off of an object, but refraction is when light is bending as it's going into an object and sort of bending like you would see uh, maybe a straw and a glass of water, how it's sort of offset. Uh, that's the refraction that we're talking about. So let's go Shift A, add shader and refraction. And then I can duplicate this mix shader with Shift D. Plug that one into the top. And again, we're going to use a layer weight like before. So I'll plug that Fresnel value into the factor. And now you can see when we look at this from an angle, we get that nice reflection. But when we look at it from the top, we can see some of the sand below. So that's very cool. All right, lastly, the thing I wanna do with this water that we don't have to do with the ones behind it is add a little bit of depth because right now it's just a thin sheet and so it's not quite refracting everything accurately. So this might work if you're just having this island, but say if you have a character walking through the water or anything like that, it's not going to distort realistically. Uh, so to do that, we need a little bit of depth. And we can add that in the modifiers section. I'm gonna turn this resolution down to 15 temporarily, so it'll go faster. I'm going to add a solidify modifier. And that's just going to add a thin little lip of thickness to this. And if I increase this thickness, I can have it go all the way through the sand. So now we have a little bit more thickness. And if we render this out, we'll see things are going to distort much more realistically. If you put like a cube in the water, how things will look quite good. Now for water, the index, the index of refraction isn't 1.45, that's a bit closer to glass. We're gonna change that to 1.33. That's going to be the end of index of refraction, which is basically saying how much this material distorts the light as it passes through. So that's looking good. One very last thing that I want to do is add a little bit of volumetric absorption. So say we add this material to a UV sphere. I'm just going to give this as an example really quick. If I scale this up and give this the ocean material, make sure that's shaded smooth. You'll see it might look like a raindrop or whatever, but there's no substance to it. There's no depth to it quite yet. Uh, if you see like a, a glass of seawater or maybe this might be more prevalent in a glass of wine, uh, it's a different color depending on how much liquid there is in that area. So the volume of it. So I'm going to add a shader and volume, volume absorption right there and I'm going to plug that into the volume socket. Now, if you turn this all the way up to one, it's not going to do anything, uh, but we can change this to be a little bit of a color. So let's add a little bit of a teal color for that ocean green. Maybe lower this a little bit. 
you can see the more dense this is, the more of that volume we're going to get on the inside, whereas the edges are still that nice uh, reflective material. So I'll delete that example sphere. Uh, but we can see this in the ocean. It's just not quite as obvious, so that's why I wanted to use the example. So now we have an ocean material that's looking quite nice. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to add it to these other ones. I can do this super fast by just selecting both of them and then selecting the original. And then under here in the materials panel, under this drop down, I can just copy to others, and that's going to give the material to these objects behind it. So now we're almost finished with this, with the shading portion. So let me really quickly just add a material for the sand. So I'm going to add a new material and call this sand. And we'll just start out with a little bit darker tannish color, just like that. However, you'll notice that sometimes sand is a little bit reflective, especially on the very edges. And this is again due to the Fresnel effect. So let's add that effect in here right now. Let's press Shift A, Shader, and Glossy. And a mix shader, of course. And we'll mix these two together. Again, we want the grazing angle one at the bottom. Input and layer weight. Plug in the Fresnel so we can see the effect. Let's pull it back to about 0.1. And now we can see the result. So the good thing about this is we're going to get some of that sun reflected off of this area right there. And I'll pull this down to 0.1. OK, one thing about beaches is that the water sort of laps up against them, and it's going to make the sand wet. So let's change the color of the sand based on where it's wet. So I'm going to take this diffuse, and I'm going to add a input actually, excuse me, a color and mix RGB. And that way I can, with this first one, just color pick it. And then color pick the second one. So they're exactly the same. And then with the second one, I'm going to pull that down and make it a much darker color. And I can plug that result into the diffuse. And now we can mix in between these two based on a factor. Now the factor in this case is going to be a texture. So let's add a texture and gradient texture. because we want the lower parts of this object to be dark, but we want the rest of the sand to be nice and light. So let's plug that factor right into the factor of there. Um, and if we press Control Shift and click on this gradient texture, we can see exactly where it is being applied. Right now it's being applied from left to right. So let's change that. Let's add a texture coordinate so that we can better define where we want this. And if we plug in the object to the vector, we can see that it's cutting it directly in half instead of having it based on the generated coordinates. Uh, the middle of this is now going to be the middle of the texture. But it's facing the wrong direction. We want it fading uh, vertically instead of horizontally. So let's add a vector and mapping node and here we're going to rotate the Y negative 90 degrees. And we're doing that because you can see on the Y axis, right now I was cutting it in half along the Y, but we wanted it to rotate. So we can cut that negative 90. And if we look at this with the mix node, so if I exaggerate this, uh, you can see that is now fading from dark to light. Now if I increase this value quite a bit, you can see it's going to fade out a little bit less. So we have a much better transition, but we want that part to be above the water. So we can just take this island, move it up so that part's above, scale that down a bit. And just move it so that it roughly corresponds. And when we look at this from camera view, 
we now have a part of it that is a little bit darker uh, based on the sand being wet. Now, the wet sand is also going to be reflective, so let's show that in the uh, factor for the diffuse and the glossy. So the way we're going to do that is a, another color and mix RGB. Now we can take this factor, we can see we want the white to be reflective, and in this we also have the white being reflective. So what we can do is um, add the two together, make sure we clamp that so no values are going to be greater than one, and if we take a look, we now have that area being added to it. Now we don't want it to be super reflective, so let's just pull it up to about 0.3, and we should be good to go. So we don't see that too much because we're not shining the light directly on it, but if we look at that from an angle where the light is being reflected off of it, we can see our sand is now looking pretty nice. Now we may want this to be a little bit yellow as well, just to give it that color. And there we go. Uh, lastly, I'm just going to select this ocean and increase the resolution. Just so we can better see how it's working. All right, so we have the shader for our island. We have the shader for our water. And in the next video, we're going to be adding a few more objects.